big steak knife, and that's all right. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. I got it. Give it up. Give it up. Good God. <laughs> hey, Todd, look at these mail-order steaks from Omaha. All ready to thaw and put on the barbecue. What I want to know is where's Glinda? She killed my best sweater in the dryer. <laughs> she didn't kill it. She put it out of its misery. <laughs> oh, Bishop. Haven't seen you this upset since Pat Boone wore that leather collar. Well, Pat Boone offered an apology. This time, it's my wife. Aunt Helen's wearing a leather collar. No. <laughs> we had a fight. Do you know what she called me? I'm a guy. Let me guess. Insensitive? Sloppy? Oh, I know. A big bag of wind. <laughs> she said I was boring. Huh. Well, what do you think she meant by that? Uh. Without turning it into one of your long, long stories. I am not boring. I am devoted to my work. She forgets that. Do you believe she actually expected me to drop everything and sail off on some cruise to Bermuda? Well, that's perfect for you. Instead of playing bingo in the church basement, you can play on the fiesta deck. I am not boring. Helen's problem is that she doesn't listen. So I told her, look, if you think I'm so boring, you could just go to Bermuda without me. <gasps> what happened? She went without me. <laughs> Well, at least she listened. Good morning, everyone. For some of us, look what you did to my sweater. Oh, sorry. I thought it was an oven mitt. <laughs> hey, why is Glenda doing your laundry? Don't you have a washing machine at Mrs. Henderson's? And I can't use it. I swear there's more of that woman's hair in the lint trap than it is on her own head. <laughs> Dad, is Leonardo awake yet? I want to take him to school for show and tell. Guess he's asleep under the cedar chips there, honey. He ran on that wheel all night. He's probably still sleeping it off. That's what Kenny's doing, and he doesn't even have a wheel. <laughs> Linda, I hate to keep harping on this, but where did you learn to do laundry? The same place you learn how to shrink heads? I'd like to shrink your head, but unfortunately, God beat me to it. Dad, Leonardo's not in his cage. Somebody left his water bottle off, and he crawled out the hole. Okay, okay, hold it, people. We have an emergency. Meredith's hamster has escaped. There's a live rodent loose here? I'll go get that rat trap in the garage. That'll snap his neck like a breadstick. You shut up! You let him loose! I did not! Yes, you did! You hated him! I hate you! Well, Andy? I get blamed for everything around here! I hate this place! You know, I'm tired of the word hate. Come on, people, check your thesaurus. You know, there are alternative terms. Abhor, loathe, despise, detest. Okay! I despise this place! <laughs> Thank you. That was exemplary. And he did do it. I'm sure he didn't mean to. And accidents do happen. Yeah, I'll try to remember that next time I'm traipsing down the yellow brick road with all the other munchkins. <laughs> Todd, if I hear one more word about that sweater, I'm leaving. One word? Yes. Sweater. <laughs> I found this cheesecake in the fridge. I was saving that. I can see why. It's delicious. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. What are you doing? Tracking a critter. See? The hamster wants his food. He'll have to walk through the ring of flour. And then he'll leave a little white trail of footprints all the way to his hiding place. Very clever. Yes, I've actually found Fred twice this way. <laughs> well, sounds like you've covered all the bases. Well, actually, I'm kind of covering my own tail on this one. I was the one who left the water bottle off the cage. How did you do that? Well, last night, Leonardo and I were, were watching TV. It was Ski Party with Frankie, Annette, and James Brown, the godfather of soul. <laughs> anyway. We were lying here on the couch, and I had him up on my chest. Oh, hello. Here you go. Tell me what I miss. Hi. Yes, Todd? No. 
No, for the fourth time, I do not know where your favorite sweater is. Why would I want to touch that sweater? I only have one question. How could I be so careless? No, why were you drinking from the hamster's bottle? <laughs> it was too far to walk to the toilet. <laughs> I gotta get that hamster back. Meredith's just gonna hate me. You know, she's the only kid around here who still pretends to respect me. Well, you could let Andy take the rap. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. I already did that when I broke the church window with a baseball. Hello, John. New sweater. <laughs> I got it at the Outland Mall. They knocked 90% off the price because it's extremely flammable. <laughs> They knock 90% off the price because it's extremely ugly. Daddy, I saw footprints. There's a crown white footprints leading to the washer. Well, that means Leonardo's underneath. Here, grab this food and you can lure him out. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, stick your face under there and scare him out. <laughs> You're a jerk, Andy. If he has to go away, why can't you just leave that alone? Yo, stay, Kenny. I'll tell it. Kenny, what did you do to Fred? Nothing. Kenny gave me a wedgie. Dad, look what he did to my Walkman. Actually, that was me. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You sentenced Fred to a wedgie without due process. Well, are you saying I should give the bishop a wedgie? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go to Connie's. Uh-uh. Steak night tonight. Family barbecue. Well, count me out. Gladly. Hey, shut up, you little twerp. You shut up! How would you like my fist in your face? Hey, 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 hold it! What is it with all the anger in this house? You guys are acting like little monsters. I mean, come on. I'm a minister. I'm supposed to set an example for the church in my community. Do you know what that means? You're not very good at what you do. <laughs> now, look. This mean-spiritedness has got to stop. Up to your quarters till dinner. Think about what I said. We gotta work on this. Well, suffer the little children. <laughs> you put a sock in it. The way you talk to Glenda, just get out there and light that damn barbecue. Gee, I guess the little acorns don't fall far from the big angry tree. <laughs> Michael, your house is besieged with a plague of anger. Why couldn't God send something simple, like locusts? At least you can spray for locusts. You're a good shepherd, Michael. I'm sure you'll find a way to lead your flock to greener pastures. Speaking of moving on to greener pastures, I think the hamster has. Leonardo! He, he's, he's sleeping, right? Yes, Michael, he's sleeping. <laughs> for all eternity. Oh, Lord. Now I'm a pet murderer. I killed Meredith's hamster in the dryer. Poor Leonardo. Just last night, he was sitting in my shirt pocket eating sunflower seeds. Look, a couple of them left. Wait a minute. Those aren't sunflower seeds. Well, I guess we never know what each new day has in store for us. Well, certainly not him by the startled look on his face. <laughs> kind of looks like Mrs. Henderson when she walked in on me in the shower. <gasps> <laughs> Believe me, I'm not bragging. It's just she's been alone for a really, really long time. <laughs> no, actually, Todd, he looks more like he was starring in the old hamster production of Home Alone. <laughs> Come on, guys. What are you laughing at? Oh, Meredith is just going to despise me. Come on, Michael. Stop kicking yourself. You did your best. Yeah. I know. I even tried CPR. That's why his little mouth is so wide open. <laughs> Daddy, I've been waiting and waiting. But Leo won't come out. Uh, I know, honey. That's because he's not under the washing machine. You found him. Great. Where is he? Uh, well, before I answer that, I have to tell you something. You see, last night, Leonardo and I were watching TV. I was playing with him, and accidentally, 
I left the water bottle off the cage. See, it was me. Andy had nothing to do with letting him get loose. He's dead, isn't he? Yes, sweetheart. I'm, I'm sorry. What happened to him, Daddy? Well, it wasn't very pretty, honey. He climbed inside the dryer. I guess he thought it was a big wheel. <laughs> But it was just a bigger spin than he gambled on. <laughs> anyway, poor little guy, I'm sure he tried to keep up at first. Uh, Mike, actually, uh, I'm sure he probably died in the wash. Oh, no, but Bishop, please, please, there's no time for, for jokes. Here. No, no jokes, just logic. I mean, he wouldn't have gone through the dryer without first going through the wash. <laughs> Yep, that's probably true, probably true. He crawled into the laundry basket and then was thrown into the washing machine. And right, so he didn't fry in the dryer. He, uh, he drowned. <laughs> Which is always good. <clears throat> I think what the guys are trying to say here, honey, is that he went out clean. <laughs> Oh, sweetheart, sometimes grown-ups handle grief differently than children do. You killed me, Nardo, and you're laughing. Now I see where Andy gets me. Oh, Meredith, wait! Oh, Meredith, sweetie. Look, you know I wouldn't have let Leonardo out of his cage on purpose. It was an accident. I know you're upset. I'm upset. But if I know you like I think I know you, I know you'll find it in your heart to forgive me. Gee, I uh, think you know somebody. <laughs> Dad, make Fred sit somewhere else. He's drawing flies. <laughs> oh, Meredith, there you are. So are you feeling better, sweetie? Yeah, I've been thinking. You liked me, Nardo, as much as I did. So, if you did something bad, I guess you didn't mean it. Well, that's very forgiving, Meredith. If we don't forgive, we only hurt ourselves. That's great, honey. Where did you get that? From you. You said it in your sermon once. Oh. Oh, maybe I am a good shepherd. Unless he's watching over a flock of hamsters. <laughs> Children, there's going to be a funeral for Leonardo tomorrow. Attendance mandatory. Oh. 12 noon sharp. Noon? I don't want to get up early for some dorky hamster funeral. <laughs> Attendance mandatory. If you guys are finished, mess dismissed. Okay, who's ready for seconds? Ooh, ooh, I am. <laughs> you know, Bishop, for somebody who's too busy to go to Bermuda, you sure have been hanging around here doing not much of anything. Don't you have any outside interests? No, he doesn't. Not a one. No, that's not so, Todd. I used to have plenty. I used to, uh, I used to go dancing, take fishing trips. Once a year, I'd even perform with the Community Shakespeare Festival. And come on, Uncle Pete. You used to do Shakespeare? Oh, yes. I was quite a performer in my day. The lover, all is frantic, sees Helen's beauty in the brow of Egypt. The poet's eye, in a fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth. To Boy, that's nice. Has your wife ever heard you talk like that? Not for a very long time. It's funny how little by little I've let these things go. But we can't let these things go. We've got to keep recharging our batteries. That's why I ride my motorcycle and play the drums, you know. Twirl the baton. <laughs> I uh, don't twirl the baton. I don't either. <laughs> You know what I think you should do? Hop on a plane, get down to Bermuda, go to that dock, meet your wife, and lay some of that Shakespeare on. <laughs> no, I doubt she'd go for that anymore. Yeah, I guess things change. If she loves you, she should accept the man that you've let yourself become. An old, burnt-out husk. <laughs> the 
the man you once were. Am I right? No. I will not yield to kiss the ground beneath young Malcolm's feet, nor to be baited by the rabble's curse. Look out, he's high on red meat. <laughs> In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Uh, action of the tiger, that's from Rocky. <laughs> I'm going to get to that airport if I'm going to beat the cruise ship to the Bermudas. All right, go for it. <laughs> action of the tiger. Yes, that's me. Good shepherd. Thanks. Once more into the breach, good friend. Once more. Once more. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to pay our last respects to Leonardo the Hamster. And in honor of his memory, I want each one of us to say something nice about him. <laughs> All right, I'll start. Leonardo the Hamster, I admired his spirit of exploration, which unfortunately was a spirit that resulted in his early demise. <laughs> However, Leonardo, I salute your spunk. Leonardo was my first hamster. He was soft and cuddly, and I'll always love him. Me too. I thought his eyes were kind of cool. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I liked the way he would um, put those little uh, sunflower seeds in his uh, cheek and make him look like Dizzy Gillespie. That would, uh, that really cracked me up. Hey, Glenda? Oh, well, I didn't know him. But he's the cleanest little bugger I ever saw. Yes, he certainly is. Fluffed and fresh as all outdoors. <laughs> Kenny. Oh, okay. One night, you guys were all at the movies, and I was here by myself, and I heard the hamster's wheel turning, and even though he was just a stupid hamster, it made me feel good, because I realized I wasn't alone. What? Well, I'm not saying anything. Annie, just say how you liked how he ran in the wheel so we could all just get on with our lives. No! I hated it when he ran in the wheel. Why? Did you ever look at his face when he ran in the wheel? He wasn't playing. He was trying to get away. Because he was in a cage. It was like it was going crazy. And I guess I felt sorry for him. And if you make fun of me for this, I'll kill you. Well, I guess Leonardo had a lot more friends than any of us realized. Yep. And all it took for us to find out was for him to drop dead. <laughs> That's why I wanted everybody here today. Just to let you all know that we're all going to croak someday. Wow, Dad, you really know how to perk up a room. <laughs> well, it's true, Kenny. We should all remember it. So we can stop being angry with each other and learn to love each other while we're still here. Andy, will you help me bury Leonardo in the garden? Sure, Meredith. We all will. And I'm going right back to bed. <laughs> Mother Todd! <laughs> Hold it, you two. You got anything to say to each other? Yes, but I was going to wait till she was dead. <laughs> I'm sorry about the whole sweater thing. So am I. And there's something I'd like to do about it. Hold out your arm. She's got a gun. <laughs> I want to knit you a new sweater. Oh, I knew that. Well, isn't that nice? Hope it doesn't have a bullseye on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be lovely. Now, let's start by measuring the neck. Uh, that's tight. That's, that's too tight. <laughs> that is too tight. 